Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be going over the top 10 mistakes that I see new dropshippers making when they first start out. Now if you're new to dropshipping or want to get started, either leave a comment in the video or send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. I'd love to help you out. Now let's get to this list. Number one on this list is spending all of your time planning. I know you want everything to be perfect. I know you want to be profitable right away. I understand that you don't want any mistakes and you want this to go off without a hitch. However, what's going to happen is you're going to continue to plan until it's no longer a planning phase and it's the only thing that you do. And then you'll plan yourself into the future and never actually execute. You're going to make mistakes you're going to lose money. It's going to hurt from time to time. You're going to get frustrated, but you have to get out there and do. It's the only way you're going to learn. It's the only way you're going to grow. Get over the fact that you're going to fail and just accept the fact you'll fail and that you're going to learn from it. So number two hits me a little bit harder than it should. Lacking creativity when you first start out. Look, you left your corporate job because you have an idea. Stop bringing that corporate job back with you. You don't have to be following some kind of structured rules and regimens. You don't have to be the one that says this is how it has to be. You're allowed to be creative. You're allowed to have fun. You're allowed to express yourself. Don't be afraid to bring your own personality into your business. This isn't the bank that you used to work at where you had to be a specific person from nine to five and then you could be yourself in the evening. You can be yourself all day, every day. By running your own business, you free yourself creatively. So many people get back into the structure that they were so desperately trying to get away from, and then they think that this just isn't right for them. It is right for you. It's right for the real you. You are the one who said, I wanted to do this. Go out there, do it, be you, have fun, be creative. Break the rules a little bit. Don't fall into the same mold you've been going into your whole life by working for somebody else. Um, so as somebody who's giving advice, this one's a little bit hard for me to say, but stop listening to everyone's advice. Just follow one person. Follow their advice as well as you absolutely can and follow it to the end. And then once there's nothing else to learn from that person and you feel you've really mastered what they had to say, move on to the next person. Don't jump from person to person to person trying to implement their strategies and figuring out which of their strategies is better. What's going to happen is you're going to create some kind of Frankenstein's monster of a strategy which has one thing from everybody that you've gone to and you're trying to implement it. If they're teaching you something and they're truly successful and this is how they maintain their success, duplicate it. And then move on to the next person and see if you can duplicate that and if you can improve it with anything you learned from the first. But whatever you do, until you see success, either follow the one person or quit following that person and follow someone new. Don't let other strategies bleed into somebody else's strategies because building a strategy out of two different ones doesn't always work right. Number four on the list is attempting to compete with Amazon and Walmart and other big retailers on price. It's okay. They're going to be cheaper than you. There are plenty of people out here who are successful not competing on price. You are not going to be able to win in a price war with Amazon. They can afford to lose for much longer than we can. That's just the truth. Don't worry about what the price of this product is on Amazon. Don't worry about what the price is if they went down to Walmart. Do yourself a favor and try and find products that are unique and then price them according to how well you can sell them. And I don't mean how well you think you're gonna be able to get sales volume, I mean actually writing sales copy that's going to convert for these. That's what you're looking for. Now, if you have a really great persuasive sales copy, you can mark anything up. There are ceramic pots and pans that go for $900 a piece. There are also ceramic pots and pans that go for as little as 10 to $20 a piece. What's the difference? The persuasion, the brand, and essentially 
people are okay with paying the extra $880 because they think it's better. It's their perception of the quality that matters, not the actual quality. So before I get into the fifth point, I just want to say I understand you're probably not a professional web designer or developer. But there are enough tools out there and there's enough knowledge out there to stop the small mistakes that are happening. The biggest that I see, number five, is poor web design. You cannot expect a website that looks like it's from the early 90s to perform well in 2020. You just can't. So what you need to do is you need to go out and do your best to make a high converting website by keeping things simple. You don't need 17 different colors to attract their attention. You're not a peacock, you're a sales website. Make it crisp, make it clean, and cap it out at four colors. Anything over four colors is too much. I suggest two to three colors at most, but you can get away with four. Number six, poor product descriptions. And I, I understand, trust me, I do, I get it. We're not all salespeople. But don't import a product from AliExpress using their product description, which is a list of features, and expect to be able to sell it for a profit. There's a reason why you're going to AliExpress and reselling these. Your money that you make is in the product description. It's, it's in your advertising. It's in how you persuade your audience to believe the value is there for them. And that, that's your product description. That's your advertising, your persuasion. Don't settle for the crap that you're putting on the websites. I, I'm going to pull up a couple of examples and just put them in the background. It's so frustrating seeing all these potentially great websites. They have great design. It's a great product. It's a winning product. And then you see on the right-hand side, features. And then it has the company's name. And it's something like uh, Yalite. And no. That's just the, that's not even the manufacturer. That's the distributor. Get rid of all that. Tell them it's a really simple acronym. Whiff them. What's in it for me? That's your customer. They want to know what's in it for me. Why am I buying from you? What am I getting out of this product? Sell them on what's in it for them, and you're going to see your conversion rate go up. Number seven. I might contradict myself a little bit here from number four, where I said don't compete with Amazon and don't compete with Walmart. But on shipping, compete with them. Don't charge for shipping. If they can afford to have two-day shipping for free or one-day shipping for free, you can afford to have 17-day shipping for free. And don't tell them it's going to be 17 days. In the follow-up email, you'll just put an email, this is when you can expect your product, we'll have shipping to you as soon as it leaves our warehouse. It's free. Give them free shipping. And then you're going to see in a different section, and I'm going to put that up on the screen here. I have three different shipping methods. Two of them charge. One's $4.99, one's $7.99. I call them plus and premium. And what they do is they offer tracking and insurance, and then the premium offers tracking, insurance, and a one-year warranty. Tracking and insurance is already included in any e-packet product that you send out. You're selling air. And the $7.99 is rarely going to be picked. It's a concept called price anchoring, which I'm going to explain in a further video. Just know that it makes that $4.99 look a lot more appealing to your customer. Okay, number eight. Putting up an ad and expecting to get sales right away. This is a game. And before I get too far into this, I, I want to say there's more than just Facebook available. Don't think that you have to go onto Facebook and it's the only way you're going to get sales as a brand new dropshipper. Explore all methods. If you have a product that's going after younger people, go after Snapchat. If you have a product that's going after people who might be looking for something that's more of an idea, go after Pinterest. Don't think that you have to go after Facebook or Instagram influencers. Um, you have options. Explore them. So with that being said, if you put out an ad and you don't get a sale in the first day, it's okay. It's going to happen. Know what you're looking for and don't be so aggressive when cutting. Sometimes you just need time. Sometimes your sample size is just so small that there's no expectation of a sale. 
So many people say, oh my goodness, I've spent $3 on advertising. Why haven't I gotten a sale? Or I've spent $3 on advertising. I've had 17 people visit my website and I'm like, wow, that's awesome. You're getting less than 20 cents per click. I would love that on Facebook. And they're like, but I'm not getting any sales. Well, yeah, here's some facts. 2% of people are willing to buy from you on the first visit. Now there's gonna be some deviation to that, but in most cases, 2%. That means one in every 50, you need 50 clicks, which means if you're getting 20 cent clicks, $10 in advertising, you can expect a sale. Be patient. It'll pay off. Number nine, not utilizing SEO. I know some amazing dropshippers who just don't do it. It's not hard. They're actually doing it without knowing that they're doing it. But if they had a strategy, they'd perform even better. They think it's this technical term that you can only do if you're, you know, really smart and you know all the ins and outs of Google. Um, there's two types of SEO. There's on-page SEO and then there's off-page SEO. With on-page SEO, it's everything that you're doing on your website to go after short and long tail keywords. Now, if you don't know anything about that, I'm going to put a card up here for you to visit a quick refresher on SEO that we've done. Now, with off-site SEO, what you're doing is building links that come back to your website. That's the key. Now, there are some more technical things that you can do with search engine optimization, but don't overthink it. Get out of your head and just go do it. Now, that leads us in to the final thing that dropshippers do wrong when they're first starting out. Number 10, not having proper customer support. I'm sorry, this is a customer service business. If you think that you're selling a back massager or an ab stimulator, you're wrong. You're selling your customer service. You're selling their dreams. It just happens to come in the form of customer service for an ab stimulator and they want a six pack of abs. Stop thinking that it's all about the product. It has nothing to do with the product. You can write a compelling description for a rock and sell plenty of them. Look to the 80s for the pet rock. Find an angle and execute. It's not the product. It's the dream, it's the idea, it's their goals, it's their hopes. It's everything you're making this product into and then it's your customer service following it up. If there's a problem, apologize, even if it's not your fault. I apologize. I understand how exciting it is that something is on its way. We feel the exact same thing and we can't wait for you to get your product. Here's what it is doing right now. Here's the up-to-date tracking. Um, and uh, we are so sorry for the inconvenience. Here's a coupon code for 20% off your next order with us. Was that hard? No, don't take it so personally. They're not mad at you. They're mad that they have to wait. They're throwing the equivalent of an adult temper tantrum because it's not today shipping from Amazon. Just express your deepest condolences and give them a 20% coupon or a 10% coupon. Just show them that they're appreciated. Make them feel like they won. That's all they want. They want to feel like they won. It's not hard. You don't have to win every battle. You just have to be profitable. Are you going to remember when Tanya Smith from Columbus, Ohio complained that her thing wasn't in the mail when she wanted it? No. When you've made your first million dollars in sales, you're going to think back and say, yeah, all those complaints, but you know what? We took care of it because we're a good business. And guess what? When you apologize and you give good customer service, people will tell their friends. Unfortunately, guess what else? When you give bad customer service or you don't respond to an email for three days, or when you tell them, well, we already sent you the tracking link, they're going to tell everybody, not just their friends. Don't make this a fight. You don't win this fight. Apologize and move on. Hey, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, when you're first starting out, it can be really intimidating and there's a lot of information out there and it's hard to know who is good, who is bad. Um, and it's, it's hard to figure out who to follow. 
I know when I started, I almost bought a course and I spent a lot of money. Um, I ended up finding a really good group that fostered a lot of the the learning and, and helped me grow as an individual in the drop shipping um, in the drop shipping business model. Um, I, I attribute all of my success to being able to find that group and then be with some like minded individuals. Uh, that's why I'm actually starting this series is I want to offer that to everybody who's starting. So if this was useful, give us a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and then find us on Facebook. We have a group. Right now it's about 150 people. We're all drop shippers or uh, digital marketers trying to improve our craft. Um, we would love to have you. That link will be in the description below. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments. I answer every single comment. Um, and if not, I'll see you in the next video.